In this video, we're going to go ahead and create the fuse for the grenade, and depending on how long everything takes to set up, we're probably going to also set up the uh, component, well, the sphere component for applying damage. So what we're going to do is we already have everything set up for throwing the grenade. We then, okay, does this, it's like it went through the wall. Did that or just bounce behind it? Okay, so just bounce behind it. Thought something wonky happened. So we want to go ahead and add a uh, sphere component. We want to have a ability to set a simple fuse timer. And we're just going to go from there. Go in grenade.h under our grenade mesh. Go ahead and copy this section here. We're going to add a, what is it, a U sphere component. So we got a forward declare it. So class use sphere component. Mine automatically added to the header, which I don't want. Let's do damage sphere. Let's take this over to grenade.cpp. Damage sphere equals create default sub object. Use sphere component. Text sphere component. Let's go ahead and include it. So hashtag include components here component.h. And we can go ahead and this should automatically be set up underneath the grenade mesh. We don't have really any parent for it since the grenade mesh is our root. So it's going to kind of follow it around. Next up, let's go ahead and create another U property. This one is going to be our fuse. So float, fuse, how do you spell fuse? I think that's right, fuse length. And by default, let's make it five seconds. So once the fuse length runs out, well, whenever we release the grenade, we're gonna trigger and start the camera for fuse length. And that is in turn going to call a function to explode the grenade. So I'm gonna actually make this one public. So I wanna do void do explode. Yeah, that's what I'm going to call it. And at the implementation. And the reason I want this is to have the ability. So for example, let's say you throw a grenade and someone shoots it out of the air, even though it's not necessarily the most realistic, but I want that grenade to explode. So just kind of like you could make it effortless to have another little feature like that. Again, all you would do is just simply call explode if you're projectile or line trace hits the grenade. Anyways, after we do all this kind of stuff, we're going to set a timer, and this is going to be our fuse length. So, get world timer manager dot set timer. This, no wait, we need the timer handle first, so f timer handle xp explode handle this, then a grenade, explode, and then the, the length of the timer, so the delay. So ours would be use length, and then false because we don't want it to loop. So that way it'll just go ahead and destroy the handle and everything like that. And inside of here we want to do our fancy mumbo jumbo, so we have our damage sphere. We can do get Overlapping actors. For this, what does it do? Does it return actors? It'll show me that would be great. There we go. Okay, so it just takes in. Okay. So let's do T array. A actor. Overlapping actors. Pass that in. And then the other parameter was what? And are you not going to show me again? There we go. Oh, of well, certain actors. So in our case, it would just be a T subclass of. And it would be a grenade tutorial character. Like so. And that should give us uh, hopefully only 
uh, players that are in this area. What we're going to do now is iterate over these actors. So four overlapping actors. We want to do a four each. So four. Let's do A, actor, actor, and overlapping actors. What in the world? Go ahead and cast it. So F, A, grenade tutorial character. Character equals cast to A, grenade tutorial character from actor. We're going to log. Log temp, warning, text, uh, exploded, and actor, percent S. We're going to go ahead and do character, get name. So this should print out the name of the character that it overlapped with and hit. I'm going to go ahead and build the project again and set up the uh, fuse length and scale up the uh, overlap. And hopefully we Hopefully it'll actually work first try. Okay. Find our grenade. Right here. Here is our uh, overlap. So I'm going to move it closer to the center of the grenade. Even though it's not much of a deal. The reason the grenade's offset like this is because I wanted to have the ability to simply attach it to the hand, we do attach the component. So it's offset, I just attach it right to the hand. I don't need to have any sort of socket or offset or anything like that. It'll just attach right up. So here's our damage sphere. We can scale that up. Let's bump it up by five. Let's go ahead and just for now, let's do like eight. That should, yeah, why not 10? That should be big enough. Click on our grenade up here. We have our fuse length of five. Just gonna leave it. Let's go ahead and throw the grenade. Close to it. Three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five. Okay. I did not see any text get printed. Okay, so let's go ahead and confirm that this is okay. So grenade.cpp, we are setting that timer. Go ahead and do another log outside of it. So actors hit, percent D. Let's do overlapping num, and just see what happens. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and restart the editor. Okay, now let's just see. Try it again. Actors hit, zero. So I'm almost wondering if this T subclass of filter might... Actually, are we set to generate overlap events? Go ahead and go into our damage sphere. Collision, generate overlap events. Should be overlapping everything, including pawns. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the T subclass of filter and make sure that that works as intended. Well, hopefully, anyways. Actors hit, zero. So we're having an issue of not getting our, uh, what you call it? We're not getting any actors that are inside of this. Now just to be 100% safe, I'm gonna go ahead and bump this up to 50. Okay, 100, so it should get really anything. And then what I wanna do is I also wanna click on the grenade Actors hit one. So it hit our first person character this time. So it could have just been our damage sphere was not quite big enough. 
sure I can see the damage sphere. Yeah, I guess not. So, could have just been that our damage sphere was not quite big enough, because I don't have like a really good reference for scale. Actually, we can. We can add a skeletal mesh. I'm just going to add the uh, arms. Add that above the damage sphere. Set scale back down to 1. So there's the arms. I'll go ahead and scale this damage sphere in. Let's do 50. Even if I'm... I can only be about 240 centimeters away. I want to bump this up to 20. And that should give us a decent... Find a room and just confirm it. Okay. Wait for the fuse to go off. Actors hit zero. So something odd is happening. My guess at this point is the damage sphere, for whatever reason, knowing the location is extremely far off. I'm going to look into that real quick and make sure, because I feel like something that's not staying attached. So I'll see you back here in a minute. Okay, so it took me a little bit, but I was able to figure out what was going on. So what I did was I clicked on our damage sphere, search for hidden in game, and I went ahead and uncheck that so that way it's visible. And if we go to throw it and we watch, I'm pressing F8 by the way, and we click on the component there and we go to watch it, it's very hard to see but it is rotating around super fast. Like you can just barely see the white lines. Or the uh, grenade. But anyways, it's like it's super out of position. It's, uh, it's not following it as you would intend to follow it. So what I'm going to end up doing is come down here to our explode for our grenade. What we're going to do is simply detach it and well, we're going to set the location to the grenade's mesh location, and then simply detach it. So, well, probably the detachment part is probably unnecessary, but we're going to go ahead and try without it first. So let's do damage sphere, set world location, and then we want to set it to the uh, grenade mesh get component location. So that way it will... Uh, Wherever the grenade mesh is, it will go ahead and set it, well, so to speak. So now when I walk into it, it's kind of hard to see, but our actor, we were hit. You can see it when we did that set, like this is the overlap right here. So this is where it is right now. However, if I go to click on it, it shows the updated location. So I click it, like even Ken. Well, maybe it did just leave it there, but pretty much that's all it did. So we just have to set the location to where the explosion happens, and it'll handle it itself. So now we can take it. Uh, we're going to check hidden in game again. I'm gonna reset the scale and just actually change up the radius. I'm gonna add a skeletal mesh so I have a reference for scale. Again, just do the arms. Let's drag that down. I don't know. How far out is that? About 300-ish. Let's bump that up just a tiny bit more. So let's go to 400. And I'll leave it there. So we have the sphere radius of about 400. Let's go ahead and give it a test, throw it. Wait for it to go off, and we got hit. So our grenade is working. We have our quote unquote explosion occurring, even if we're relatively far from it. So we are able to take damage that way.
So now you would pretty much just want to set your damage. So I'm going to show you how to, uh, we'll actually do that in the next video. I'm going to go ahead and actually leave this one here. The only thing I want to change is I want to try that T subclass of again. So, so that way it filters out a grenade tutorial character. Let's see if this fixes it. Well, it doesn't fix it, but uh, lowers the amount of actors that it's trying to get. Okay, so it worked. So this function, for the most part, is complete. The only thing we would have to do, which again we're going to do in the next video, is add a simple particle effect, uh, maybe play a sound, I'll just use the first person shooting sound, and then destroy the actor. That's all going to be done on the location right here. So whatever grenade's mesh location is at the time of exploding, that's when the stuff's going to happen. Yeah, that's going to be then for this video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down below, where I also have a Team Deathmatch series dedicated just for Patrons. If you have any questions or anything like that, you can find a link to my Discord server down there as well, and I will try to help you out to the best of my abilities. So, I'll see you in the next video.